Telemedicine is the way of the future. That's right, guys. We can service you anywhere in the country, nationwide, through telemedicine, FaceTime, Skype. We will take care of you guys. Our pharmacies ship directly to your doorstep. Whether at your home, your office, or in your vehicle, Titan Medical Center can help you. So contact us today, 727-389-3220, and check out TitanMedicalCenter.com. Thanks, guys. Hey everyone, I'm here in front of Titan Medical Center and I've always wondered what they're all about, so let's go inside and take a look. Here at Titan Medical Center, we see you as Titan family. When you walk through our doors here on Channel Side, you'll be greeted by our courteous staff. After you sign in, we'll make sure to greet you with a bottle of water and a Titan swag bag, because hydration is important. After that, you can relax on our comfy couches in our beautiful lobby. After a short wait, our medical assistant will come to take you back to our patient treatment room. Our medical facility is state of the art and we want everyone to stop by and see us. Here at Titan, we offer hormone replacement therapy for males and females, medical weight loss, vitamin amino acid injectable therapies, rejuvenation detox, libido enhancers, IVs, blood draws, and much, much more. Once you're in our patient treatment room, you'll have your vitals checked. We are a medical clinic and we make sure that your health is our top priority. After that, you will be greeted by our medical provider. They'll ask you how you feel, what your goals are, and talk about how Titan can help you. We want you to reach your health and fitness goals. We care about our patients and want to help you feel, look, and perform at your very, very best. Come be part of the Titan family today. Hey guys, this is Jerry Ward from Bio Street Training, and I've been with Titan literally for about four years now. Now, it's hard to find doctors in the medical industry to help athletes because they don't really understand their needs. Titan understands. So when I went to Titan to get my first blood work done with them, they came back with a full metabolic panel, let me know everything that was going on, made some adjustments, got me back on track with my health. And not only did they help me, but they helped my wife in the same way, who's actually going through adrenal fatigue due to her job being a CBR nurse working crazy hours, the high stress levels that were going on and stuff like that. They got both of us back on track and couldn't be more thankful to them than we actually are. So my favorite therapy personally for me is the testosterone. Now why the testosterone? Well, I'm 43 years old. My testosterone, when it was measured, came in at 117, which is well below what it should be. And I felt it, I felt like that. So every day I'd get up, I was lethargic. I had no motivation. My body was healing slowly. I felt like I was 43 when I was, you know, literally getting my, my levels checked. After I went on the testosterone therapy, they also put me on HCG, which actually helps raise your luteinizing hormone, which a lot of people don't realize. When you raise testosterone and not your luteinizing hormone, you can still get the same side effects as having low testosterone. So they understood that both of those things have to be in check. The uh, Rimadex actually kept your estrogen in check, so everything was in balance. So after about a week of being on the therapies, literally I felt like night and day difference. And after a couple of weeks, I felt like not I was 43, like I was 18 years old again. So. Thank you guys from Titan Medical for getting me and my wife both back on track health-wise and feeling great and being 43 and feeling like we're 18 again. Hey guys, it's Cass, nurse practitioner with Titan Medical Center. I want to talk to you guys today about hormones, testosterone in particular. So I have a lot of questions from friends, family, and my patients. Should I test my hormones? Well, that's a great question. I think the answer is yes. So some may ask, what are the symptoms of low testosterone? Well, some of the symptoms may be being tired constantly, being irritable, depressed, not interested in events with friends and family, decreased muscle mass and strength, slower recovery, decreased sexual health, sexual dysfunction, weight gain. Those are all some of the signs of low testosterone. We as human beings, naturally, our testosterone can decrease with age, illnesses, with medication and lifestyle choices such as, you know, being overweight, obesity, lack of exercise. So some of the benefits of balancing out your hormones such as your testosterone can be increasing your 
quality of life, being able to enjoy friends and family and you know events around you more often, also having better energy levels, being less irritable, increasing your sexual health, increasing overall wellness, decreasing fat, increasing muscle mass, increasing muscle gain, decreasing insulin resistance. So evaluating if you are deficient on your hormones is achieved with a simple blood test. We can know where your levels fall. We'll find out in a few days. We can put together a plan to balance out your hormones and bring back the happiness and you know vitality to your life. Give us a call, 727-389-3220. I'd love to help you out. And once again, guys, stay strong and stay healthy out there. Hey guys, today I want to talk to you about Tighten Up. It's one of our exclusive vitamin amino acid injectable therapies that we offer here at Tight Medical Center exclusively for our patients. Now, it has that great name Tighten Up, but what are the ingredients in it that are going to help you get the results that you're looking for? So let's go through those ingredients and go over the benefits of what they're going to do for you. Methionine is the first one, inositol, choline, full B complex, B1 through B6. It also has B12, L-carnitine, and leucine, which is a branch chain amino acid. It's an essential amino acid. It means your body doesn't produce it. So, these great ingredients, what are the benefits for you? So let's go over those. So MYC, methanine, inositol, and choline are gonna help get fats out of the liver, process fats faster through the body, okay, which is also gonna help you boost metabolism. B1 through B6, B complex, along with B12, are gonna help you with a number of different ways of energy boosting, right? They're gonna help with immune function, nervous system, brain function. It's gonna help you boost your metabolism. Why? Because you want to lean down, you wanna lose weight. This is gonna help the body rev it up, which is gonna help you guys lose weight, especially with exercise and proper diet. So let's go over the next one. Well, B12 is in there, but what does B12 do? So it helps you utilize the carbohydrates and fats in the body to produce more energy. Leucine, the branch chain amino acid, an essential amino acid, and there's only three of them, but this is one of those. The best thing about this is it's gonna let you go on a calorie-restricted diet or work out very, very hard and not go into a catabolic effect, not breaking down muscle, because you wanna keep that hard-earned muscle and lean tissue. Carnitine or L-carnitine, it's gonna help you with energy. It's in almost every cell in the body. All those ingredients together are gonna to give you a maximum to optimum result in what you guys are looking for as far as weight loss. Naturally, as far as boosting metabolism, helping hair, skin, and nails, helping the immune function, the nervous system. These are the natural things that your body needs to function properly and function optimally. So if you want the best for your health and you want one of our great signature vitamin amino acid blends, then Tighten Up might be the therapy for you. So check out tightmedicalcenter.com. You guys can always call or text us for more information or to become a patient at 727-389-3220. I'm John from Titan. Thank you again for tuning in. Health is number one. And if you're not healthy, you'll be laid up in some hospital bed somewhere and you won't be able to look good and feel good and get your job done and take care of your kids and all the other fun things that you need to do on a day-to-day -day basis. So, you know, just a couple little highlights that I really wanna bring up as far as taking care of yourself is, you know, kidney functions. You know, a lot of you guys don't drink enough water, you know, and make sure that you guys stay healthy that way. A lot of people go and get their blood work done, their kidney functions aren't right. Um, high liver enzymes, you know, your liver is everything that, everything goes through your liver. If it's not operating properly, you're not gonna be able to, you know, make sure that you're staying healthy and optimal. Um, another thing, guys, is your high hemoglobin hematocrit levels. This is a huge one because I think I talked to maybe like six, seven, eight, maybe 10, 15, I don't know, people a day in reference to this. 
But um, if you have a high hemoglobin hematocrit level, I mean, your, your blood gets thick, it doesn't go to where it needs to go on time, and it's sticky. And you know, if you don't get rid of that blood, this is what causes like pulmonary embolisms, blood clots, heart attacks, you know, all the negative things you hear that, you know, if you're not taking care of yourself and staying up to date on the blood work, you're not gonna know these things. High PSA readings for you guys out there. I mean, you gotta make sure you stay on top of this stuff, guys, it's so important. These are just vital organs that I'm talking to you about because it's very difficult to get, you know, kidneys or, you know, anything like that. If you go, if you run out of your liver, you're done for. So, you know, I just wanted to kind of bring some awareness to you guys because health is very important and it's super important to make sure you monitor these things and make sure you stay on top of it because if, if you're not on top of your health, I mean, who else is going to be on top of your health, you know? So stay on top of your health, take care of your body. You only have one body. Take care of your one body, okay? This is your temple. Make sure you take care of it and make sure you keep it operating and running. Everybody wants to be around for their kids and their grandkids and, you know, so forth. So, you know, take care of yourselves out there, guys. What's up guys, John here from Titan, and I'm here with Yetta, who is one of my Titan-sponsored athletes, uh, and she's got an amazing, extraordinary story to go behind it too. So if you don't know who Yetta is, Yetta's gonna introduce herself, and she's gonna explain where has she come from, because you see this awesome body and everything she's put together right now, this package, but she does have a story behind it. So Yetta, why don't you tell everybody who does not know you where you've come from in your transformation, because you've come pretty far oh yeah pretty far right. um, well um, I come from losing 70 pounds um, I competed for about eight years and I ended up in a, a car accident uh, mm -hmm. that de debilitated me I had neck and back injury from that and mm -hmm. I had to totally retire from the sport so I got really depressed I couldn't work out anymore I had to go to physical therapy blew up gained a lot of weight blew up to 215 pounds Wow and it took me years to try and lose the weight right. I was just discouraged didn't think I could do it again um, I tried all different how yo-yos and things to try and get my head straight, but when when I train, it's all or nothing. Right. I just can't give a little bit. Super dedicated. Super guys. dedicated. And so um, I met one of my friends. Um, she got me into a program called Herbalife, and I just tried it just to get my body just regulated on normal eating again. Mm -hmm. So I did Herbalife, got down to 140, and all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, I'm starting to see muscles again. You know mm -hmm. what? I think I'm going to train for a bodybuilding competition just as a triumph to myself because I was told that I couldn't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. I was so I hired um, a coach, uh, Kelly Lynn. Uh, she had BP, uh, YFBB Pro uh, physique competitor to help me on my journey mm -hmm. towards the stage. So mm -hmm. I decided to pick the Iron Bay Classic. Trained for that. We got down. I lost 70 pounds for it. Um, I won overall women's physique champion. Mm -hmm. Got nationally qualified. And here I am now, I'm training again um, for the Iron Bay as a warm up to nationals, where I'm gonna be competing in masters um, nationals in Orlando. And the reason she's doing that is to get her pro card, if you guys don't know. So they wanna compete, they get qualified, and then they go on to get their pro card so they can be hopefully IBB pros, right? Yes. So it's been awesome. So if you haven't checked out Yetta's page, check out her page. She's got a lot of other talents too. So what else do you do? I'm a professional opera singer. Can you believe that? <laughs> this little girl pushing out that awesome voice. And it is awesome. If you haven't heard it, you got to check it out. Especially if you're in Tampa. When the shows start opening back up, I'm sure Yetta's going to be in one of those shows, and you guys can go check her out on stage, too, as well. She's been on stage two times, hopefully, this year. Yes. Hopefully, you know. So uh, she's got super dedication. Um, I check out her page daily, obviously. I look at my athletes, make sure everything's going good. And she's in there all the time. She just told me she's in there for four hours a day. <laughs> yeah. All right, with yeah. her with her guy Reggie, so he's training too. So he's come a long way too. So you guys aren't gonna get to see that transformation until the <laughs> show. The show night, we're gonna have them both on here. We'll check them both out so they can show you what went on, show you how everything's been done at the show, and show you hopefully what the results are. Hopefully, we're gonna take home some wins. Oh, if yeah. not, proud of them either way because they've shown a lot of heart, a lot of dedication, a lot of patient passion, and that's what Type Medical Center is all about. Yes. So we're rooting for you, Yetta. Thank we can't you. wait. Can't wait. So we're excited to have her in here. Excited to see her on stage this year at the Iron Bay Classic, which is presented by Tight Medical Center again this year. 
Jose Santiago, Sun Tran put on that awesome show. So it's gonna be it's gonna be classic. So if you guys are in the Tampa area, come check us out September 12th. You guys will see us. Iron Bay Classic, Titan Athletes, Titan will be set up there. So come check it out. Come check out Yetta and all the rest of the Titans out there. So I appreciate you coming in today, Yetta. Yes, thank you so much for having me, John. Absolutely. We'll see you guys September 12th. And you guys can check out Yetta's page on Instagram and Facebook. Plus, she's all over the Titan Medical Center page. So keep it locked, keep it tuned, and we'll see you soon. Hey guys, John and Sharice here. Hi. So we want to talk to you guys about something that's really important. Mm. Um, it's an affected our family and it's affected a lot of different people out there and a lot of different families out there. Um, and it's something that's very, very serious and it's going on right now. Let's talk about COVID-19 and being positive for COVID-19. Me and Sharice and our son, Peter, who's 11 years old, um, were positive for COVID-19. We found out weeks ago. Um, it's affected us in all in different ways. So we want to talk to you guys about some of the truth, some of the facts, and some of the things that we went through or still are going through because of COVID-19. Um, COVID-19 is very serious. In the beginning when COVID-19 was, you know, first came here to the United States um, and we were on our first lockdown, obviously we were being very safe. We own a medical center. We have mm -hmm. all the resources of a medical center, all the PPE that we need. Mm -hmm. um, masks, you know, gloves. Masks, mean. gloves, gowns, the whole nine. Mm -hmm. um, we took it obviously very serious. You know, we were very serious about what was going on. Um, after so long, we never had anybody that we knew that was positive for COVID-19 that we personally knew. Mm -hmm. We talked to patients because we had patients all around the country. Some of them were in hot spots like New York and Washington and stuff like that. And, you know, in Seattle. And they were basically became positive for COVID-19. Mm -hmm. And some of them told us some of the stories that they were going through. But we never personally, you know, got affected by that. When you're getting like a story told to you, though, like, you know, obviously you feel for that person, but whether it's a patient, a friend, whatever, even if you see it on social media, you feel for that person. But like when it's somebody that either you might know, like, you know, you know, you know, very personal, like a personal friend, you know, like me, for instance, like I am, I was not a lucky one. And I was the one that, to be honest with you, like, I was the crazy one, you know, like when we went out and stuff like that, because, you know, I don't, I don't like to be sick because I have so many hours that I have to work. So I don't have time to be sick. I don't have time to be down. I don't have time to take a nap. I don't have time to do anything. You know, I make time to do my nails and my hair and all that fun stuff because I have to, but you know, I don't have time to be down. So I don't want to be sick. So I kept telling John, anytime we ever went anywhere, I'm like, well, I don't want to go like anywhere right now, especially when it first, first, first came out. Yeah. Everybody was scared to death because we didn't know what it was going to do. <clears throat> and to this, to this day, we still don't know all the stuff it's doing. Right. Um, but, you know, I didn't want to go because I'm going to be like, I'm going to be that, I'm going to be that unlucky person that gets sick and gets real sick. I'm like, so I don't want to be that person. So we wore our masks. You know, I would keep my social distancing. I was that one chick that was, you know, we went out to the this fight and, you know, it was right around that same time. And everybody, you know, you see them and they're like, hey, what's up? And, you know, they come and they want to give you like a hug and, you know, like say what's up and everything. And I was being really standoffish. And I'm usually like a really, really nice you know, lovable person. And I'm always like, hi, you know, I give him a hug, a kiss. And, you know, like, but I, at this point I was like, hey, he just do daps, you know, or like, Elbow hey, dance. or, you know, yeah. whatever it was, you know. And people were looking at me like I'm crazy. And I'm like, dude, I don't want to be sick. Like, I don't want to be where I'm at right now. <laughs> so anyways, yeah, that happened. Um, yeah, I mean, it really happened, honestly, <clears throat> after you know, our state were in Florida. So at that point, when we started opening up, you know, as things started opening up more, um, you know, obviously, you know, we wanted to get out and do some stuff too. Like we want to go out to have a dinner, you mm -hmm. know, uh, and eat in dining, you know, some of the, some of the things that bring us back to normalcy, right. 
you know, some of the normal life that we had before. Yeah, because we were in quarantine forever, it felt like. Yeah, I mean, we were essential workers, luckily, because of the medical center. So we were working every day, but it was straight to work and straight home. If we had to stop at gas pumps, we were wearing gloves. We were sanitizing afterwards, sanitizing our credit cards afterwards, Mm -hmm. wearing N95 masks because we had them. Mm -hmm. Um, Just being very, very cautious. We took our son with us to make sure he was cautious with us. He was isolated in a room, making sure he was doing his distance learning. Because that's when distance learning was going on. School wasn't over at that mm-hmm. point. So we were really, really cautious. You know, we were oh, really standoffish. Stand <laughs> we took so um, many different steps. To we do took it. a lot of different steps. And, and then when things started opening up a little bit, you know, we obviously went out to dinner um, a couple times. And, and, you know, that's basically what we did. We didn't do anything crazy. It wasn't like that. Um, but, you know, after a few weeks or whatever, I think it was in, you know, early June, you know, Cherie started getting feeling a little sick. Right? Yeah. So at that point, what happened was, was, you know, obviously because we have Titan, uh, we have, you know, a lot of resources as far as medical uh, supplies and stuff like that. We had swabs for COVID-19, you know, real swabs. So <laughs> Cherie swabbed herself the first time. Well, it wasn't even that, though. So, like, we had really good friends of ours, you know, that okay. needed to be tested, yeah. right? Yeah. So I was exposed to people that were positive, right? And this was right around the same time that I started getting you know, a little bit of sickness. Right. And I wasn't feeling good. And it all started, honestly, with just a sore throat. Yeah. And everybody, like, you could just, you could lose out on some sleep and then be like, I just have a sore throat. I mean, how many how many of you guys out there have been, like, lost out on some sleep one night and just woke up the next day and you're like, ugh, I have a little bit of a sore throat. Oh, whatever. I'll just get over it. Usually that's one thing that gets inflamed first is like <laughs> a sore throat if you've done that. And you have right. your tonsils. Right. A guy like me, I don't have my tonsils anymore, so... I really never have sore throats. Yeah, he got, yeah. But the way this went down was like really, 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 really messed up. Okay. So like John was saying, you know, I did the initial swab because I'm like, well, you know, we did have some positive cases. You know, that weekend I started getting a sore throat and I'm like, well, obviously I'm like, well, if I have access to do the swab, why wouldn't I swab? You know, so I was like, let me go ahead and swab. So we did the swab and at that time, I mean, right now at that time, I think it was still like, you know, well, how long was it taking? Still like five to seven days? Yeah, almost. it was still like taking like five or seven days to do it. <clears throat> to get back like the, the results. The results. <clears throat> and at that point, listen, Sharice, you know, if they want to claim those as symptoms, you did have symptoms at that point. Mm-hmm. You, she was going through some of these symptoms, which, you know, made us think, hey, listen, we want to make sure, let's swab. She swabbed. It, it literally took five to seven days. Um, at that point, it came back negative. So it came back negative, right? But, you know, someone like me, I'm super, 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 super in tune to my body. And I know when something is wrong, okay? Now, the way that it worked with me, though, is I didn't just get a sore throat. Like, so I got the sore throat. Then I was tired, but I'm always tired because I'm working. So you start chalking these things up to the normal things that you would normally get, right? And just think, COVID is not the only thing out there. You know, you have strep throat, you have influenza, you have influenza A, you have influenza B, you've got upper respiratory infections, you have sinus infections. You have a million different things out there that it could be that it's just not COVID, it's that. You know? I mean, think about how many things affected us or we got sick from before COVID-19. A hundred things, right? right? And you okay. got a sinus infection. Okay, so that's not COVID. That's a sinus infection. So, um, you know, what really had me was when I woke up and I was like, stood up real fast, you know, to just go take a shower and started feeling really dizzy. And I'm like, okay, well, this isn't right. So then when I started feeling dizzy, all of a sudden I started getting these shooting pains like up into the back of my neck. And it went up into the back of my neck and it would almost like freeze everything. And it's still happening now. And I'm on day 23 and, you know, it would freeze everything. But cleared of COVID. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm totally cleared, (sighs) but I'm still having symptoms, you know, like as far as like I'm still having these lingering things. But I have like a train of things going on right now. Unfortunately, I just had a very, very, very unfortunate set of events that took Mm -hmm. place back to back to back. So, you know, it shot up these little zings, I want to call yeah. them, and they make your eyes shake. And, you know, you can't, I, I felt like I couldn't see anything for about 30 to 45 minutes, and it was really blurry. That is a scary feeling when you cannot see, okay? Now, when you try to walk up and down the stairs and you can't breathe, that's also a scary feeling. So now you're short of breath, you have double vision, 
you feel like you're going to pass out and you're like, okay, what's going on? Now, the crazy thing about when, you know, I'm coming down with this is that, I mean, I didn't spike some super high crazy fever either. Right. I wasn't at like 104 fever and I have a thermometer in my house. I have a thermometer at the office. I check my temperature. I didn't have a fever like that, you know? So all these different symptoms for all these different people, it's not even like, you know, if you get sick, right? Say you have strep throat and you get patches in the back of your throat, you're going to get a sore throat. It's going to last about a week. You're going to put on antibiotics and then it's going to go away. You know, you get a sinus infection, you spit up green, you, you know, <clears throat> you have these ugly colors that come out of your nose, you get sick, you have a headache for X period of time, and you get over it in this amount of time. This, it's like, who knows? You know, you got one person that they get diarrhea for two days and a cough for one day, and boom, they're fine. Then you have one person, they're, they're also positive, they're running around asymptomatic. Not even, not, not even a sniffle, not even a sniffle. Then you got... Person number three, they got a headache. It won't go away. They have a headache for five days. Won't go away. They have no sore throat, no nothing. Then you have person number four. They end up in the hospital. Me, personally, I end up in ICU. That is not somewhere I have never been, ever. So, you know, it's it's really crazy like how it just affects so many people so different. And then to have access to be able to do the testing and then do the initial test for the initial test to come out negative. What if I didn't run the second test? Like, what if I didn't? What if I was a normal person, a normal patient, went to a normal clinic, got my normal swab, came out negative, and I'm suffering, right? I feel terrible. I'm sick as heck, you know? I'm short of breath. I can't breathe. I'm, you know, can't think straight. I have a headache. I literally cannot operate like my hand eye coordination not working properly just I've never been through something like this ever in my life you know and then body aches as far as like not being able to like move my body and just feeling like flu like symptoms it's not even flu like symptoms and that's what I was actually you know before I was diagnosed positive for it because the second test came back positive like I told John I told John it's gonna come back positive I'm like I can't breathe I was like I'm only you know i'm under 35 i'm 125 pounds i'm like i don't work out every day but i sure as heck can run up and down those stairs if i need to with a laundry basket right. so don't tell me that if i need to go downstairs to go get a snack i'm out of breath <laughs> i think the real issue here and the problem was was sharice had underlining uh infections going on with a bladder infection beforehand and it yeah. was it was pretty serious Put okay in a bad position and then and then COVID supposedly started. Well, we didn't know in the beginning because she tested negative for the COVID-19. After that, we have x-ray at our office. So we ran an x-ray because that's one thing to look at. You know, some radiologists said, hey, listen, this is pneumonia, right? Mm -hmm. So we're chalking up to pneumonia because yeah. you can't breathe because of pneumonia, right? Okay, cool. It's you're having pneumonia. food in there. You're going to cough. It is what it's going to be. At that point, we said, listen, she said, listen, let, I'm going to swab again. I think it's a good idea. Swab again because, you know. We, it might be, or we might have had it, I a didn't false feel negative. Right. I didn't feel right. Um, at that point, listen, I had no symptoms or anything like that. So I'm like, yeah, it, it can't be COVID-19. He's telling I, me. I feel everything, right? I, I sleep next to her every night. I <sighs> kiss her, you know, every night. We're very close quarters, you know, doing our thing. So at that point, like, I'm like, I'm like, listen, I'll swap too. <laughs>